Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Meditating the Word. I'm really glad you're with us on this year-long trip through the Bible. Want a guide to what we've read and what's coming up? Just get the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. Check the link in our show notes. I'll be reading from the World English Bible, but you can use any Bible you like. If you haven't hit subscribe on our podcast, why not do that now? Just click subscribe so you won't miss any episodes. This is Day 176. Today, we're reading 1 Kings 15 and 2 Chronicles 13-16. through The First Book of Kings, Chapter 15 Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijam began to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maaka, the daughter of Abishalom. He walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem because David did what was right in the Lord's eyes and didn't turn away from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now there was a war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. The rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? There was a war between Abijam and Jeroboam. Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in David's city, and Asa, his son, reigned in his place. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa began to reign over Judah. He reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Maaka, the daughter of Abishalom. Asa did that which was right in the Lord's eyes, as David his father did. He put away the Sodomites out of the land, and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. He also removed Maaka his mother from being queen, because she had made an abominable image for an Asherah. Asa cut down her image and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away. Nevertheless. The heart of Asa was perfect with the Lord all his days. He brought into the Lord's house the things that his father had dedicated, and the things that he himself had dedicated, silver, gold, and utensils. There was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might not allow anyone to go out or come in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that was left in the treasures of the Lord's house and the treasures of the king's house and delivered it into the hand of his servants. Then king Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabrimon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, who lived at Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between me and you, like that between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent to you a present of silver and gold. Go, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel, and struck Ejon and Dan and Abel Beth Maaka, and all Chinneroth, and all the land of Naphtali. When Baasha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah, and lived in Tirsa. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah. No one was exempted. They carried away the stones of Ramah, and its timber, with which Baasha had built, and King Asa used it to build Geba of Benjamin, and Mizpah. Now all the rest of the acts of Asa, and all his might, and all that he did, and the cities which he built, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? 
but in the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet. Asa slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in his father David's city, and Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his place. Nadab the son of Jeroboam began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin with which he made Israel to sin. Baasha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Baasha struck him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel were besieging Gibbethon. Even in the third year of Asa king of Judah, Baasha killed him and reigned in his place. As soon as he was king, he struck all the house of Jeroboam. He didn't leave to Jeroboam any who breathed until he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. For the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned and with which he made Israel to sin, because of his provocation, with which he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab, and all that he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? There was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Baasha, the son of Ahijah, began to reign over all Israel in Tirzah for twenty-four years. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin with which he made Israel to sin. The Second Book of Chronicles, Chapters 13 through 16. In the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, Abijah began to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. There was a war between Abijah and Jeroboam. Abijah joined the battle with an army of valiant men of war, even four hundred thousand chosen men, and Jeroboam set the battle in array against him with eight hundred thousand chosen men who were mighty men of valor. Abijah stood up on Mount Zemaraim, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, and said, Hear me, Jeroboam, and all Israel. Ought you not to know that the Lord, the God of Israel, gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, rose up and rebelled against his Lord. Worthless men were gathered to him, wicked fellows, who strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not withstand them. Now do you intend to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David? You are a great multitude, and the golden calves which Jeroboam made you for gods are with you. Haven't you driven out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and made priests for yourselves, according to the ways of the peoples of other lands? Whoever comes to consecrate himself with a young bull and seven rams may be a priest of those who are no gods. But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. We have priests serving the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites in their work. They burned to the Lord every morning and every evening burnt offerings and sweet incense. They also set the showbread in order on the pure table and care for the gold lampstand with its lamps to burn every evening. For we keep the instruction of the Lord our God, but you have forsaken him. Behold, God is with us at our head and his priests with the trumpets of alarm to sound an alarm against you. Children of Israel, don't fight against the Lord, the God of your fathers, for you will not prosper. But Jeroboam caused an ambush to come about behind them, so they were before Judah, 
and the ambush was behind them. When Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind them, and they cried to the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout. As the men of Judah shouted, God struck Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. The children of Israel fled before Judah, and God delivered them into their hand. Abijah and his people killed them with a great slaughter, so five hundred thousand chosen men of Israel fell down slain. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah prevailed, because they relied on the Lord, the God of their fathers. Abijah pursued Jeroboam and took cities from him, Bethel with its villages, Jeshana with its villages, and Ephron with its villages. Jeroboam didn't recover strength again in the days of Abijah. The Lord struck him, and he died. But Abijah grew mighty, and took for himself fourteen wives, and became the father of twenty-two sons and sixteen daughters. The rest of the acts of Abijah, his ways and his sayings, are written in the commentary of the prophet Edo. So Abijah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in David's city. And Asa his son reigned in his place. In his days the land was quiet ten years. Asa did that which was good and right in the Lord his God's eyes, for he took away the foreign altars and the high places, and broke down the pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, and to obey his law and command. Also he took away out of all the cities of Judah the high places and the sun images, and the kingdom was quiet before him. He built fortified cities in Judah, for the land was quiet, and he had no war in those years, because the Lord had given him rest. For he said to Judah, Let's build these cities and make walls around them with towers, gates, and bars. The land is yet before us, because we have sought the Lord our God. We have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. Asa had an army of 300,000 out of Judah who bore bucklers and spears, and 280,000 out of Benjamin who bore shields and drew bows. All these were mighty men of valor. Zerah the Ethiopian came out against them with an army of a million troops and three hundred chariots, and he came to Maresha. Then Asa went out to meet him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Zephatha at Maresha. Asa cried to the Lord his God and said, O Lord, there is no one besides you to help between the mighty and him who has no strength. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rely on you, and in your name we come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Don't let man prevail against you. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. Asa and the people who were with him pursued them to Gerar. So many of the Ethiopians fell that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before the Lord and before his army. Judah's army carried away very much booty. They struck all the cities around Gerar, for the fear of the Lord came on them. They plundered all the cities, for there was much plunder in them. They also struck the tents of those who had livestock, and carried away sheep and camels in abundance, then returned to Jerusalem. The Spirit of God came on Azariah, the son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him, and if you seek him, he will be found by you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long time Israel was without the true God, 
without a teaching priest and without law. But when in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. In those times there was no peace to him who went out, nor to him who came in, but great troubles were on all the inhabitants of the lands. They were broken in pieces, nation against nation, and city against city, for God troubled them with all adversity. But you be strong, don't let your hands be slack, for your work will be rewarded. When Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominations out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin, and out of the cities which he had taken from the hill country of Ephraim. And he renewed the Lord's altar that was before the Lord's porch. He gathered all Judah and Benjamin, and those who lived with them out of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, for they came to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of Asa's reign. They sacrificed to the Lord in that day of the plunder which they had brought, seven hundred head of cattle and seven thousand sheep. They entered into the covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. And that whoever would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. They swore to the Lord with a loud voice, with shouting, with trumpets, and with cornets. All Judah rejoiced at the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found by them. Then the Lord gave them rest all around. Also, Maacah, the mother of Asa the king, he removed from being queen mother because she had made an abominable image for an Asherah. So Asa cut down her image, ground it into dust, and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. He brought the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver, gold, and vessels, into God's house. There was no more war to the thirty-fifth year of Asa's reign. In the thirty-sixth year of Asa's reign, Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might not allow anyone to go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the Lord's house and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who lived at Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between me and you, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you silver and gold. Go break your covenant with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa and sent captains of his armies against the cities of Israel, and they struck Ejon, Dan, Abel-Maim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. When Baasha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah and let his work cease. Then Asa the king took all Judah, and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah with which Baasha had built, and he built Geba and Mizpah with them. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa king of Judah and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore, The army of the king of Syria has escaped out of your hand. Weren't the Ethiopians and the Lubim a huge army with chariots and exceedingly many horsemen? Yet, because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the Lord's eyes run back and forth throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him.
you have done foolishly in this, for from now on you will have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in the prison, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. Asa opposed some of the people at the same time. Behold, the acts of Asa first and last. Behold, aren't they written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? In the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa was diseased in his feet. His disease was exceedingly great, yet in his disease he didn't seek the Lord, but just the physicians. Asa slept with his fathers and died in the forty-first year of his reign. They buried him in his own tomb, which he had dug out for himself in David's city, and laid him in the bed, which was filled with sweet odors and various kinds of spices prepared by the perfumer's art, and they made a very great fire for him. Father God, over and over again, we see that when your people sought you, when they followed your word, they prospered. But when they allowed pride to enter in, or trusted in false gods, or in their wealth, or in their own strength, or that of other nations, they failed. Father, help us to remain faithful to you, to trust in you and you alone all the days of our lives. Amen. You can catch Meditating the Word on any podcast platform you like, on YouTube, or even Facebook. If you're listening from one of the podcast platforms, we've got links in the notes to help you find us everywhere else. My mission is to inspire folks to deepen their Christian faith by reading God's Word every day. You can pitch in, too. Share this podcast, rate it, review it. Every bit helps. Hey, thank you for being part of this Bible journey with me. Please know that I'm praying for you. Let's all pray for each other. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.